up everybody and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today I want to talk a little bit about something that um and I just I just got back from FitCon and um while I'm thinking about this, I don't like to let ideas go by, so as soon as I think about something I just immediately record it. And um I want to talk about perspective and changing your attitude and how that changes your life. Before I left for FitCon, as some of you know because you were at FitCon, you asked me about the situation. Many of you at the Arnold had asked me about the situation. Before Carrie and I split, we found out that our then our cat, but her cat, Ginger, had cancer. And she was very ill, and Carrie had to stay home from the Arnold and stay with her. You know, it was a very touch and go thing for a long time. Like while Carrie was at work, I would watch her. Carrie would come home and take a look at her and decide whether or not she had to go back to the vet to be looked at. And it was a touch and go thing for that was at the Arnold in the beginning of February, so March, April, May, so it was about three months. And um, it was one of those things where, you know, when is the right time to put an animal down? That's like your kid. You know, Carrie had never gone through that. When Nico had to be put down, it was my decision because Nico came with me, he was my dog. You know, and she kind of stepped back and was like, you know, it's your decision, I can't tell you what to do, you have to do this on your own. I'm here for you, but you know, you have to make the decision. And it's the same situation with Carrie. She asked me my opinion. I told her, but ultimately it was her decision. And um, the day before FitCon, that when I left, Thursday, I got a text message. And that ping, when my phone, I have a fucked up thing with my instincts. I, my instincts are very keen. I'm almost, you know, I'm almost never wrong. I'm wrong sometimes. My phone fucking pinged and my heart sank. Like I got a nervous feeling. I knew. I knew what I was looking at before I even got to the phone. The phone was in the other room. I was in the kitchen making stuff before I had to leave for the gym, making my shakes. The phone pinged. It was in the living room. And I just, I felt awful. So I walk up and Carrie had texted me, it's, it's done. Ginger's gone. And I immediately, immediately, my eyes filled with tears and I stood in my kitchen and I cried. And I cried pretty hard. You know, like, I know it was the right thing to do. I know it was the right time. I know she made the right decision. And, um, it hit me a lot harder than I would have expected it to. You know, since Carrie and I have been apart, it's not like I see, you know, Ginger and Ed, the two cats, all the time or anything like that. But I became very attached to them. And, uh, you know, I wasn't there when she was put to sleep. But I don't have to be there because I can imagine it just like I was there. When I put Nico down, I can imagine the same thing, the same type of feelings, the same setting, all that stuff with Ginger. And I know what that feels like. It was a rainy, cold, shitty day out. And it was like that's the day that Ginger left Earth. And that, I mean, it, it hurt. It fucking hurt like a motherfucker. Like, I can't explain what I was feeling at that moment. I was feeling anger, hurt tension anxiety i mean every emotion you could probably feel sadness i was feeling at that at that very moment and um i had to get to the gym i was actually having a special meet and greet at um anytime fitness in kensington with um um a bio s3 viewer matt and uh like i was like you know five minutes late for i was gonna be five minutes late for that if i didn't get my ass moving so i had to pull my shit together get to that get to the gym and train legs which is a very hard workout since I hadn't been training for a while. I'm going back to squatting. I hadn't been squatting in a while. I was just doing extensions and curls and stuff. But, um, so, you know, I had to pull my shit together and I got to the gym. I went to do the thing with Matt. There's some pictures of him, me and him on my Instagram. I got to the gym. I did legs. In the middle of my leg workout, I was doing, the, you know, I squatted, leg press. I was doing leg extensions. Then I was doing, going to do leg curls and stiff legged deadlifts. And I just put my head down and I cried in the gym. You know, like, the, it was just sad. I was really sad. And then I knew, you know, I had my clients to train. The next thing after the clients was to run to Whole Foods, get some food. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the next morning, at like 5 o'clock in the morning, I was heading to the airport to go to Destination Dallas. Or Destination Plano in Texas. For FitCon. And um, I didn't want to go. You know, I, I really didn't want to go. I kind of just wanted to, to sit back for a couple days and pull my head together and I guess feel sorry, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what it would have done. I, I really don't know what the outcome would have been. But I didn't want to be around people. I knew that. 
I know I want it to be alone. When I get really hurt, I don't want to be around people. If I'm sick, I don't want to be around people. Like, I just want to be left alone. You know, when I diet for a show, I get quiet. I don't get pissy. I don't get, you know, I get, I get a little bit short and snappy, but I want to be left alone. Just leave me alone. And of course, I'm going to be there with a thousand people. And, you know, I, I made the commitment. I said, fuck it. You know, this is, this is what we're going to do. And I get up the next morning and, you know, I got to say goodbye to Bruno. And in my head, you know, realistically, I know Bruno's 11 years old. You know, there's a good possibility that he may not be here when I get back. I mean, he could go at any time because that's what bulldogs do. They just expire, kind of. Their hearts just stop. They just die. And at a younger ages than him, usually. So now I feel really, like, awkward and sad about leaving him because he's really clingy to me ever since, you know, Carrie left with the cats. He's really clingy to me. So I'm going to be gone. And, uh, you know, I'm driving to the airport. And I had a bad attitude. You know, I was really aggravated. My attitude was bad. I had a piss poor attitude heading in there. It was negative. You know, I went through security. And I was just like, fuck. Waiting for the plane. I was like, what the fuck? You know, get on the fly. And then, you know, I got to uh, the rental car place. And it was fucking a bunch of people in line and like two people working. So more. I'm just like more aggravated. I don't want to fucking be here. Like all this stuff is going through my head. Very selfish thoughts. And then, um, you know, I, so I was late to destination for the meet and greet. But I got there and I ran into Rich and Big John and Katie and Zach and a few other people there. And, you know, um, right away, people started approaching me. Jerry, hey, how are you? You know, how are you doing? Hi, da, 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 da. Can you sign my shirt? Can you sign my belt? Can you do this? How is this? How's that? You know, like, how's Bruno doing? And everything kind of melted away. Like, there was just a bunch of positive energy coming at me from every fucking direction. That I couldn't be negative even if I wanted to. And, um, you know, I spent probably about an hour there hanging out. And, you know, I had people ask me, you know, how's, you know, how's Ginger doing? How's the cat doing? You know, and, and you and Carrie are still friends. How's the cat? And you know, I had to tell them, like, look, you know, they just, she just put it down yesterday. You know, it's a second I felt bad again, but then, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you know, then it'd be like, oh, I remember when I had to do, you know, like they would pick me back up. Like the, the viewers would actually pick me back up by telling me their experience and that it gets better over time and it's okay and she's in a better place and people talk about the rainbow bridge and stuff and I felt all right again, you know, so I left there and I went to the hotel to check in and I was going to go train and by the time I got there, I realized that I had readjusted my attitude. Nothing had changed. Ginger was still gone. The rental car was still a pain in the ass. I was still running on very little sleep. I still was felt bad about not being, you know, home with Bruno. Like nothing had changed situation-wise, except I had come in contact with some of the BioS3 viewers, who were being all positive, and that rubbed off on me. And once I changed my attitude, I felt better. So it was all here all along. It was all stuck in my head that I was having such a, you know, a rough time. Now, granted, it sucks, and you know, I'm going to have to heal from you know, a loss. I mean, everybody does. But once I got there and got around everybody, you know, and I kind of, you know, I told Rich about it and, you know, we talked about it. And like, it just, you know, we just kind of like, everything just kind of flowed, you know, like in the next day people, oh, you know, how's Bruno doing? Oh, say hi to Bruno, rub behind the ears for me. You know, they really take a vested interest in you. It feels really good. You feel like people actually care. People that don't even know you actually care how you feel. And how am I going to sit there and feel like shit? When all these people that are telling me this and asking me this stuff have gone through the same shit, they have had the same exact pain, they have fucking re gone through it and come out the other side and been fine, and they're giving me a pat on the back when they don't even really know me, tell me it's going to be okay. How the fuck am I supposed to be negative with that? So by the end of the weekend, the attitude adjustment, not the John Cena the attitude adjustment, but the attitude adjustment seemed very real, and I realized that, you know, sometimes... You know, we can make things a lot worse than they actually are. Sometimes things are bad, but we make them worse ourselves. You know, there was a shitty situation, but I was making it worse myself. And uh, it took me a little bit to snap out of that, which I probably could have snapped out of it earlier if I had really applied it myself. But I guess moment of weakness, I didn't. But I actually got strength from the people around me that, you know, were kind of pushing me towards the positive area. So thank you guys all for sharing your stories and patting me in the back and giving me your sympathies and stuff and you know I didn't ask for them you just gave them like it was an amazing exchange and um 
this weekend would be burnt into my memory for the rest of my life. Not from just the fact that, you know, it's the biggest FitCon so far, but the fact that I had an attitude adjustment while I was out there and I learned another lesson from people that I don't even know that just adjusting your attitude on the fly can completely change the outcome of your day, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. You get where I'm going with this, but the bottom line is you can change your life with an attitude adjustment. Biowasertraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biowasertraining.com is a blog. It's the Biowas 3 Adjustment Attitude Bicep, and we're out.